Okay, so let's get started. And uh, so how much of you have done the previous assignment? Can you just put the mm, reaction? Yeah, this one reaction. For example, this one. So I want to see how much of you have done it. Seems like no one did it. Was it difficult? Okay, so uh, before starting the next lab session, firstly, I will go through the previous two assignments. I will attempt it and then we can start our today's lab. So uh, let me um, start you, uh, but before I think, uh, I should just briefly explain you what the amplitude modulation is and what the frequency modulation is. And then uh, I'll do it on the MATLAB. So I'll switch to my other com other one. Oh, I think it's, yeah, this one. So can you all hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let me start with the uh, amplitude modulation and then I'll briefly explain you the swift frequency signal and then we will switch back to the other computer and then I'll um, do it, attempt it on the MATLAB and then we will start the regular lab. So first of all, what is the amplitude modulation? So your uh, signal or your uh, modulating signal is like, for example, any random frequency or something like this. So what is the modulating, what is the modulating signal? First, let me explain you the modulating signal. Then we will, once you understand the modulating signal, then you can yeah, uh, get the concept. Modulating signal is your input signal or your input frequency. For example, uh, here are you, you are talking, and there is your mic. And your mic is uh, having some diaphragm uh, that is called the diaphragm. So when you are speaking, you are compressing or decompressing the ear waves. And with, with your compressing or decompressing the ear waves, it causes this diaphragm to vibrate like that. And when this is vibrating, uh, there is a process called transducing. So when that is vibrating, it is converting the mechanical energy to the electrical energy. So you are sending something which is mechanical, you are compressing and decompressing the air, but at the output, what happens, you are getting a signal like that, right? So it seems like you are generating a signal. And once you generate the signal, uh, sometimes you want to transmit it. Uh, so in your cars, you have FMs or um, there are some other transmission like amplitude modulation uh, transmission. So why don't you transmit just this sing signal? You already have this uh, modulating signal. So why don't you simply transmit it? What is the reason for it? for us to modulate it, uh, to perform some modulation, some complicated process and then transmit it. So there is a reason and why modulation? Let's assume you don't want to modulate and do you know, any one of you know what is the audible frequency range? Your, the frequency that you can hear. Do you know that? 22. Exactly, uh, 20 to 20,000 or 20 to 20 kilohertz, right? So the normal range is 20 to 20 kilohertz. So this is the audible range of your uh, frequency, the frequency that you can hear. So above or uh, below this range, you cannot hear it. 
So if you have, for example, uh, three kilohertz of frequency, you are saying something and the frequency, are, the frequency of your voice is lying in between three kilohertz, right? And you just simply want to transmit it. So if you want to transmit it, you will need an antenna, right? So this is your transmitter and then this is your antenna. Sorry for antenna. So uh, to have this antenna, uh, you have some formula, for example, the frequency wavelength. From the wavelength, this antenna dimension is related to the wavelength of your frequency. So uh, what is the wavelength? I explained you in the previous slide. This is the distance between the two consecutive crust and trough are the beginning points of the two frequencies. So this is the wavelength, the total wavelength of your frequency. And what is frequency? The number of cycles completed per second. Now you have this wavelength and now your wavelength is three kilohertz as I said before. So what is the formula of wavelength? Wavelength, uh, sorry, wavelength is equal to C over F. What is C? C is the speed of light. And what is it? F, F is this frequency. So you have this frequency and this is your speed of light, light. And do you know what is the speed of light? Can anybody tell me? It is three and to 10 raised to the power eight meter per second. And if you want to convert it into kilometer, then it should be three into, uh, sorry, what happened? Three into 10 raised to the power five kilometer per second. So that fast the light is traveling, right? Uh, so the light, the speed of light divided by what is your frequency? Three into 10 is to power three meter, uh, three hertz. And once you convert this lambda into uh, meters, how much it will be? It will be something like uh, three into 10 is to power five meters. So you will need and usually the length, the length of the antenna, the length of the antenna, this is proportional to the lambda. Sometimes it is equal to lambda and sometimes it is equal to lambda by two. So it depends on what kind of antenna you are using. So even if it is divided by two or something, uh, you need around something in terms of 10 raised to power five meter. So you need like this much one, two, three, four, five meter of antenna. So will you be able to make an antenna of this much size? No, it is not easy, right? It's like impossible to make an antenna like this. And we have never seen such a big antenna like that. To radiate the signal and to properly transport it to the destination. To avoid this hassle, what we are doing, we are superimposing our weak signal, which, which is our modulating signal. So our, our mic signal was modulating signal. That was coming from our mic. So please remember, it's not only related to the mic signal, any kind of signal that you are generating, your input signal is your mic signal, okay? So this is your uh, modulating signal. And then you, you need a high frequency, very high frequency. And that frequency can be in terms of megahertz, for example, 10 raised to power six hertz, okay? So this is your input frequency and this is a very high frequency like this. And then you superimpose this frequency over this one. And when you are superimposing this one signal and over this one, then it will require a small dimension of antenna and you can uh, easily transport your signal from source to destination, right? I, I can give you some other example. You are, for example, here uh, in Ancient and you wanna go to Seoul and you wanna go by foot. So it will take a lot of efforts and energy to reach here, right? But if you have a car, you can easily reach there, right? So this car is your carrier and here you are modulating frequency or modulating signal. You are superimposed here. The car will take you to the soul. And from here, you can just get off your car 
and you lose no energy. So here you are performing the modulation and there you are performing the demodulation. Is it clear or you have any question? So I hope it's clear since no question. So uh, let's go to the amplitude modulation. What is the amplitude modulation? So the amplitude modulation is when you have a high carrier frequency and then you have a signal which is varying like that and you changes the amplitude of the higher frequency corresponding to your modulating signal. So if this is for example your modulating signal you are not making any changes in the frequency but you are only changing the amplitude of that modulation and that is called your uh, amplitude modulation signal but uh, what is the frequency modulation what is the difference from the frequency modulation if you have a frequency modulation signal In that case, when you are changing the frequency of the carrier signal corresponding to the input modulating signal, then that signal is called the frequency modulating signal. Right? And what is the swift frequency signal that I explained you previously? So the swift frequency signal is nothing, but it's just a signal which will be increasing frequency very increase and then it will decrease frequency and then it will become more decrease and again increasing like that and then again decreasing like that. So this kind of frequency is called swift frequency signal and we will plot it today. Uh, yeah, I think this is enough till here and let's go back to the MATLAB and we will see how does this happen? How, how can we plot it, right? So. Um, I'll go to the participant. Firstly, I should. So, uh, let me share the screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, let us first plot the uh, AM signal, our amplitude modulating signal, right? So we are just plotting it. We are not doing the whole process. Uh, the whole process means that firstly, you have to generate the uh, modulating frequency, then you have to feed the high frequency signal, then you have to put the modulation index there, and then you have to process it. And finally, you have to see something like uh, simulate the whole amplitude modulation model. So we are not doing that now. We are just simply plotting it and you can get some insight that how the amplitude signal, amplitude modulating signal looks like. And once we uh, go through this one, the next lab, the today's lab, that we are going to do uh, that is related to the end-to-end -end communication model there we will be generating the signal we will be processing we will be doing some signal processing and you will then understand how all things works so again i will start with the my three favorite lines clc clear all and close all. and then let's say my zero modulation index. Uh, the modulation index is the major or the extent of amplitude modulating um, signal um, about the unmodulated signal. For example, you have the signal which is after the modulation and you have the signal before the modulation and the, any the amount of change that occurs between the amplitude compared to the amplitude. So if I put it, for example, um, m is equal to 0 0.4, uh, it seems like the signal will increase by the 0 0.4 and the decrease will happen by 0 0.6. This value lies in between 0 and 1. So you can choose any value between 0 and 1. 
um yeah you need to google this thing because it has more concept here but yeah simply you just have to put the value between zero and one uh let's say my high frequency is equal to 0 0.1 yeah 0 0.1 is not high frequency but i'm calling it high frequency just to visualize it and the low frequency is 0 0.01 and then uh, i am creating the signals for the high frequency and for the low frequency so for example my xh is the signal for the high frequency so you know how to make it right sinusoidal waveform 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by uh, fh uh, which is this one and multiply by n so this is my uh, high frequency and then you have the modulating frequency this which is uh, sine again the same thing so let me copy it and paste it here so this is equal to the fl right and then um, you have to perform the uh, modulation so we are just uh, writing the input signal which is my uh, y So this is my input carrier signal, right? So this is my input signal, which is the low frequency signal. Mm -hmm. And I'm just simply modulating, uh, simply multiplying it with the high frequency signal, which is this one. And that's it, uh, it's already created. And now I can just simply plot it. And then I can grade it. For example, uh, I'll show you what the grid is, uh, but just give me some time. And uh, I want to label the exit also. So I think we have already seen these things. So X label and then the Y labels. So the X label is your time index and the Y label is your, the, is your amplitude. And I will run it. Uh, something is wrong with the M and what is N? Mm -hmm. I think I didn't uh, use the X axis. So N is the most important thing. N is equal to, uh, let's say mm -hmm. one colon 100. So the X axis. Here you can see the signal, right? The amplitude modulating signal. So the Carrier frequency is basically modulated uh, by the uh, your low frequency signal. So the carrier frequency was not having that much signal, which is, it was just 0.1 compared to, it is higher compared to the FM, right? So this was the amplitude modulation. And let me generate first the swept frequency too. Swift, um, yeah, I think it is Swift, S W E P T. Swift frequency. Uh, let's say I am defining the x axis starting from zero to eight hundred, for example, and I am simply I don't want to write two by f. Uh, let me put it just a small number, for example, zero point uh, one five. This is my argument. So I had uh, already told you in the previous lab that uh, if you want to create the swift frequency, you have to put the input argument in the quadratic form. So let me combine the input. So ARG is my input, um, which is the mm, two pi FN, right? So this is the input argument. So I will just multiply A with the N and then I have to take the square of that to make it quadratic. That is it. And simply plot it. X is equal to cos or sine of this argument. So A or G. And finally, uh, I, I think I should co copy these things.
But instead of stem, uh, how about I use the simply plot? Uh, okay. And this is x, this is not y. This is the time index, this is the y index, uh, this is the amplitude. And uh, also let me put some x is defined here. I want to see not the whole frequency swapping, but I want to see the part of it. So uh, I can simply see like that, zero, 100, and then minus y axis is starting from minus 1.5 to 1.5. Okay, it depends that how much is your amplitude varying from where it is varying, what is the lowest part and what is the highest part. So if it is, I have seen it before, that's why I'm just simply putting it like minus 1.5 to plus 1.5, it is not exceeding that level. If it is like from minus three to plus three and you put the axis as from minus 1.5 to plus 1.5, it means like part of that axis you are ignoring, it will cut the remaining part. So you have to be very careful. You have to know the minimum and maximum part of your uh, amplitude, and then you have to define the exit. So if I run it, you can see this frequency will increase, again decrease, then again increase, then again decrease, and increase and decrease. That will, that will ha happen periodically. So this is it for the previous lab. Uh, I think I should cut it and paste it here and I should save it with the lab two remaining. Lab two underscore I mean. So that if I am attaching it with your I class, then you should be able to see the difference between lab three and the lab two. Okay, so today's lab is about uh, the communication. Um, it's the actual thing that we should uh, be doing and let me open the slides first. So uh, I'm not sure how much time it will take uh let me make it the full display so i'm not sure uh, how much time it will take for the signal generation then sampling and then uh, i'll see if i had time i will also cover the quantization otherwise we will do this signal generation in the uh, sampling process so uh, this is the big picture, you can see it. Um, what we are doing here, we will be generating a signal, we will be sampling it, we will be quantizing it, encoding it, modulating it, and sending over the AWGN channel. And then there will be, uh, this is the receiver part, that is the transmitter part, and this is the wireless uh, portion, where your signal is transmitted from here, from some antenna here, and then there is some receiver antenna, for example, your smartphone, it is used that signal, and then there is the receiver filter, then it do some reverse process of the transmission. So there you modulate it, you have to demodulate it. There you encode it, here you have to de-encode it. And from these three processes, you actually wanted to uh, transmit some signal, but uh, and to make it ready for transmission. And here we have to take those samples which have been received and reconstruct the signal from that. So uh, I hope uh, to cover all this process in six labs. So today's is three, then we four, five, six. And also uh, one more thing uh, is important that once you do these two uh, um, lab, this lab, so you have to remember all the process that happened here because in the quantization and encoding, we will be using that code too. So that is, this lab is basically the continuation of the previous lab. And then this lab is, will be continuation of the, all the three labs. And this, so even this signal is important here. So you have to remember the whole process because ultimately what our goal is, we have to generate a signal here and then we have to reconstruct that signal, right? So firstly, uh, I'll go back to the 
uh, tablet. I'll explain you what the whole process is. I'll show you this uh, big picture so that when we are doing the lab, we have some understanding of that. We will do, be doing everything quite deep in detail, but before that, you should have some knowledge. So let's go back and I'll uh, explain you everything. And then after that, uh, yeah, we will come back to the screen and start it with the MATLAB. So do you have any question in this one? So the silence mean you don't have any question, right? <laughs> so let me share the screen. Okay, so let me start with the signal generation. Signal generation, I already explained you in the previous part. You have a signal which is usually random in nature. It is the periodic signal is just for our understanding that repeats itself again and again, but the signal is usually not periodic in nature. It doesn't repeat itself because you never produce a sound that will repeat itself after the output of the mic, right? Your sound after the output of the mic will never be like this. Have you ever seen the recorder, the voice recorder, and your Windows-based phone? Uh, sorry, Windows-based uh, PC. If you see the sound recorder, when you are recording, it is generating very random signal, like something like that. So you don't understand what it is, right? It never repeats itself. Uh, so firstly, you have to generate a signal. Right, so that that is our input. That input can be from anything. It can be from your camera output. It can be from your mic or from any other source. So it will be generated from the source, and it will always be analog because the nature is analog. This analog signal, uh, which for example looks something random, for example looks like this, we have to mm, take some sample of it. So what is the sampling actually? Sampling, if you go to a hospital to for diagnosing a disease, you don't go give up your whole blood, right? You don't give them your whole blood to take my whole blood and just see at the machines if there is any kind of uh, this problem or this um, thing uh, there or not, if there is this disease there or not. Instead, you give just the... Uh, one injection is enough for your blood and they, they will take that, that, that sample and that contains all the feature of your blood, right? So again, why do we uh, uh, don't transmit it? Because you have limited resources. You have, this is the wireless uh, transmission, for example, the wireless frequency band. So they, there are some organization who divided who divide the whole frequency band. So it's not just air, you just produce the sound or you just produce a signal and radiate it in that air and it will go and transmit. You have to follow some regulations. You, you will have some restrictions when you are transmitting your signal. If you are the FM, you are making, you are uh, want to have your own FM, FM station, you want to have the transmission, you have to purchase it. So you have to get the license for that. So all the frequency spectrum is divided into portion and each portion is dedicated for certain application. So even, uh, uh, for example, you are using the LTE or you are using the Wi-Fi. So even in that one, you have given a small portion. You will be given a very small portion of that. So this portion, for example, you are the transmitter and this is your receiver. So the Wi-Fi band is, for example, 2.4 gigahertz, and it has 11 channel in there. So it doesn't mean that you are allowed to utilize the whole 2.4 gigahertz. It means like, uh, let me give you another example. You have this road. It doesn't mean that all the road is yours, right? You are going only on this specific lane. All the other lanes are dedicated to other people. So this one portion, you have to use this portion. 
And in wireless signal or in the wireless communication, this is very limited. Now you want to transmit this signal. This is your input signal, right? And you have, you want to transmit all the input um, uh, parts of it, like everything you want to transmit it in the analog form. That means that you have a very, very big car like that. Sorry for my drawing. drawing. So this is a very big car and that is your road. So can you move your car on this road? No, this road is too small to, for this one. You have limited resources. You have limited width of the road and you have gigantic car. You have a very big car. So you cannot use that. So how, what is the solution here? Instead of doing that, how about we have this road and then we have only this, this portion. So what the people are doing, they are making the car thinner and thinner. It's not actually happening. I'm just explaining you the resources and your input. So they are trying to make your input thinner and thinner with the same efficiency. So that if your signal, for example, this is your signal, it doesn't lose any of the information and it is efficiently transferred to this one. And with this narrow bandwidth available, with this narrow channel available. So to utilize this portion efficiently, you have to make this signal narrower so that it can go easily in there and then it can be recovered there without losing any information. For this purpose, you need to take the sample of your signal. You are not going to transport your whole signal, but you are going to only transport the part of your signal. Now the question is how to take your how to take the samples. This is the question. Now you 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 are going to collect the sample from this one, and you cares about uh, to transport it here without losing any information. To not lose the information, how can efficiently take the sample? So you have to consider the highest frequency component available there. So if you take this example, we have to consider the highest frequency available. If you randomly taking the samples. For example, I take one sample from here. Sorry, I have to take the pin. Okay. If you take, what is happening? If you have to take one sample from here, then here, then here, 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 here. And at the receiver, you want to interpolate those samples. So you will receive something like that. So is blue equal to white? No, a big no, because uh, the blue is quite different from white. You are losing this information. You are losing this information, this information, this information. So the blue is nothing like the uh, white. Now let's take another case. I want to take many of these samples. I want to take many of these samples. And for example, at the receiver, I want to interpolate it like that. And will you be able to receive the signal correctly? Yes, but what will be the consequence? The consequence will, this, the size of your vehicle or your car will become big again. Uh, you are taking too much samples, which are unnecessary. And you have limited resources. So the road is thin and the car is big again, right? So what is the solution? The solution is to, you have to efficiently, this is your signal, and you have to efficiently collect the sample from it. For example, you have to track first of all, what is the highest frequency component available? So now you saw, this is my highest frequency component. Why you cares about the highest frequency? Because you also want to transmit this portion. And if you make the sampling based on the highest frequency, you are by default considering even the lowest frequency. So uh, you are choosing the high frequency component. And according to the NyQuest criteria, it says that at least it should be higher than twice of the highest frequency component. So if your highest frequency is there, so you should take at least two samples from here. 
and then two from here and two from here and then you should keep repeating it right so to um, uh, follow the necklace criteria two is the minimum boundary so you you should have five or ten times but not too much that makes the size of your car bigger right so i hope this is all about the sampling process now when you're um, transmitting it you collected the samples sorry i should not go you you already collected these samples right the blue samples so you want to this is your x axis and this this is your y axis so how can you transmit it simply you cannot transmit it um, by taking this sample you don't know what is the amplitude here what is the amplitude here amplitude here for that case you have to do some quantization you have to define some levels for each and every point so it's kind of x axis and y axis so you are this signal you are this sample is here okay and then you it is lying in this quantile interval then you have another signal here and it is lying in this quantile interval then this is also lying in this quantile interval also this one this one this one so in this quantile interval we will take all the samples which is contained here and then you simply transmit them and similar happen for this quantile interval and also for this quantile interval so this is the quantization process i am saying it in a very abstract level so there will be a lot of process in, in, involved it like uh, uh, in, uh, other quantization things uh, the quantile error and all those stuff so i'm not talking about that at this level okay once you quantize your signal your signal is uh, ready to be transmitted but you need to encode your signal for the privacy purpose right so to uh, ensure the privacy of your signal are what one is the privacy and the other one is the digitize the signal right to digitize the signal it has to be in the form of zero and one bit now you have to transmit those signals so uh, you have to generate some binary code for it, 10110011, something like that. And then you have to transmit it. But still, you need some more thing. Now, the signal is uh, not modulated. And to modulate it, you again need some high frequency, some high carrier signal here. And you are modulating the higher frequency based on the bit pattern. And once you do that, the modulation is performed, then you have a wireless signal. So you have a transmitter here, and then you have a receiver here. This transmitter is transmitting the signal, and then there are a lot of degrading phenomena. It means there might be a building, there might be cars, or there might be people moving in the background. So your signal, your transmitted signal is striking off various places, for example, the cars and the roads and everything and various components. For example, you transmitted this signal, but one replica is coming from here, from here, from here, and from here. And then what is happening at the receiver, it will adding up all the signal, this plus, this plus, this plus, this. And they will be adding constructively or destructively. Constructively means if their amplitude and phases, everything are similar, which is very less likely, then they will be added up and it will give you a higher amplitude. But destructively mean when your amplitude are out of phase. So this is plus one, this is minus one, and this is zero, and this is minus one, and this is plus one. So it will give you nothing. So this, this type of constructively and de destructively addition causes the signal to degrade. It will be, there will be some degradation happen because of the multipath. So to uh, recover the original signal from the degraded part, you have to filter out the signal. So you, you, you should have the receiver filter. Plus this signal also degrades. When you transmit a signal, it has a higher amplitude, but when you receive signal, it will have a lower amplitude. So you will need an amplifier too. Amplifier will increase its amplitude, but uh, also uh, it's the noise amplitude will be increased because it is amplifying everything. So to remove the noise, you will need a filter. So the filter will filter it out. And then 
since uh, you, you had modulated it, so you have to demodulate this signal. So to demodulate the signal, you had the this signal pattern, for example. And from here, you have to extract out your zero one code, something like that, for example. And to get this code from, once you get this code from here, there might be some errors too, which we're not covering in this lab, but uh, then you are having some error correction techniques and best like Hemming coding or something, uh, based on that, you are just removing all those errors from there. And this is, uh, once you uh, get this sequence, then you have to uh, generate the analog sequence from the uh, decoding process. So you decode that signal. And once you decode the signal, then you have to make some reconstruction, interpolation or something, so that the signal you had transmitted here, it should be somehow like the receiver. So for example, this was the transmitter, the receiver is here. So if the receiver is quite closely related to the transmitter, it means that your end-to-end -end communication model is efficient, it is working. But if it has nothing to do with the transmitting signal or it is very bad, then it, in that case, the signal is very, uh, the communication model is very poor and it is not good enough to uh, use it. So we will be we will see all these steps in detail, but today's we are going to do the steps for the signal generation and also the uh, modulation part. So uh, any question in this, in this process? Okay, so let me um, stop here and go back to the screen. Okay, so um, today we will be doing the analog and the um, analog signal generation, and then we will be sampling it. So the goal is to make a semi-periodic signal. So periodic, as I told you, uh, periodic repeats itself again and again at regular interval of time, but uh, a periodic signal, they are, uh, they are not repeating itself, okay? So, we are making the uh, aperiodic signal. Let's go to the MATLAB. And now it is my... end to end communication model, okay? So for the end-to-end -end communication model, I require the following thing, uh, signal generation first, and then I have to do the sampling, sampling, and then I have to do the quantization. So I'll see if I can cover all these three, but let's start with the signal generation. Before that, I'll you do this one. so that I have the clear environment before my process is starting. So uh, let me consider a uh, modulating frequency of one kilohertz. So one kilohertz means 1000 FM, my modulating frequency. So I'll be commenting it too. Our, um, it can be, you can also write at 1E3. 1E3 will also write, do the same job as you write it, okay? And then let's say I am making some harmonic of my frequency. Harmonic means that the different version of frequency. So uh, I'll just explain it. Let me write it. For example, there is one, uh, one harmonic, there is 0 0.5 harmonic, there is two harmonic and there is one harmonic again. So what does it mean? 
you have one hertz frequency here, you have half of the hertz frequency here, two hertz frequency here, one hertz again. What is my goal? My goal is to make the signal a bit random, looks like a bit random. If I simply plot the sinusoidal signal, it will be very smooth and repeating itself again and again at regular interval of time, which I don't, don't which I don't want. So that's why I want to make a semi, uh, semi random signal. It's not completely random signal. And then I also want to have some variation in the amplitude. So uh, I have to one, two, three, four. So I have to use some four variation here, three three and one, sorry, one, two, three, and one, something. So here at one harmonic, your amplitude is one. At point five harmonic, your, here the, your frequency will be smaller, but your amplitude is bigger. Then your fre frequency is high. The amplitude is also very higher. And then your harmonic is one, and also the amplitude is one, so both are similar. Now, uh, what would be my maximum frequency? So let's say my maximum frequency is equal to maximum into, I will multiply the FM, which is my 1000 hertz, multiplied with the uh, harmonics, which is this one. So this is actually my modulating frequency. And these are the harmonics that I want to produce in my modulating frequency. So my modulating frequency should be oscillating like at one hertz, 0.5 hertz, two hertz, and one hertz, right? And then it should have the amplitude like one, two, three, and one again. Now, um, let me define the system frequency means the analog frequency. So I will call it the system underscore frequency. And uh, I'm saying that it is 20 times of the maximum frequency. So the maximum, uh, the maximum frequency is this one. So what, what would be the maximum frequency? The maximum frequency will be two and two times of the uh, uh, three, three uh, it will be two kilohertz. And then I'm saying that what is the system frequency means the, all the points. So if you mm, had seen, I had chosen all the points of the, mm, I, I wanted to put take all the points of my input signal. So that is my system frequency because here, firstly, I want to generate the analog signal. So when I take all the points of the signal, it means that I'm almost producing an analog signal. And uh, also if uh, you know the, difference between frequency and time period, right? Time period is the reciprocal of the frequency. It is T is equal to one over F, or F is equal to one over T. So if I'm saying that my system sampling rate, for example, this is the system frequency. So the sampling rate will be the reciprocal of this one, right? So this is the system sampling rate is equal to one over Sorry, one word, this thing. Which means that uh, I have this much points, right? Uh, I don't know if I have to go back to that uh, figure again, tablet again, but I have a lot of points here. And the difference between two points, actually that is your sampling rate. That is your system sampling rate. So the consecutive difference between each two points, that, that will be defining your simple sampling uh, system sampling rate. Uh, please uh, let me know if you don't understand so that I switch back and explain you again on the individual form. Okay. Um, so system sampling rate. And then what, what is my minimum frequency and why do I need my minimum frequency? My minimum frequency is here 0.5 hertz. So Actually, the minimum frequency contains all the frequency components. So I want to visualize two cycles of the semi-random frequency. I think this thing is getting too complicated. So yeah, let me write it down and then I'll go back and I'll explain you there. So uh, uh, minimum frequency is instead of this one, I should copy it, I should paste it. And instead of my maximum, I should, but minimum is reserved. So I should use, for example, min underscore free. 
right? And then uh, range. Range means the win window you want to uh, visualize, right? So it should be twice of the reciprocal of this. I'll explain you, don't worry. Two times divided by this one. And then let me define the time. Now, what is my T? T is equal to starting from zero. And what is your system sampling rate, which is this one? And what is your final range, which is this one? So I think I should go back. I should go and explain you the what I'm doing here. Uh, okay. I think there is nothing in the chat of it. Okay, firstly, uh, sorry, let me move the screen, scroll up. Okay, so firstly, uh, I have uh, a signal. So what does I mean, oh, what I mean from the CB random, it will be repeating itself again and again, but uh, after two say, uh, I want to re uh, take two cycle of it, right? So. I am not taking the whole portion of the signal like that, but I'm only taking the part of this, uh, I'm considering the part of it. So that is what I'm planning to do. So the first one, uh, firstly, I, I'm generating harmonics like this. For example, this is my one harmonic is this one, the second harmonic is this one, the third harmonic is this one, and the fourth harmonic is th this one, right? So if I add them all together, Actually, this is the big harmonic and the variation will occur till this portion, right? So the maximum harmonic is considered. That is why for the range, for the range, I'm considering the minimum frequency, okay? So when I consider the minimum frequency and then just to make sure that I should cover all the, the signal, I consider it two times. So it will, for example, give me two cycles of this one, and then I want to visualize this one. What is the sampling system sampling frequency? So the I was transmitting it like this, right? So I was considering a lot of points. So the lot of points means that it is almost now analog because I'm sending each and every point. It is 20 times, right? And what is the rate? So the rate is the distance between the two points. Right, so the distance between this point or this point or this point, they are similar, right? Since the sampling frequency is 20 times, so it is just the reciprocal. So the rate is the difference between the two, right? So once I consider the two times of the lower frequency, which is my range, right? And this is starting from zero, then I consider a window like this. So I hope if you deeply uh, look into the uh, code, then you will understand what it is actually like. So if you had any question, then you can please let me know. So uh, let me go back to my screen. So this was the range. So I am considering that twice of the minimum frequency and then I am making it like to visualize it. Now, let me generate the signal. To, this, uh, to generate the signal, 
um, now, firstly, let me create a variable which I call the message and I'll fill it with zeros and the size of P, right? So, which is this one. So I'll say that this is the size of P. And uh, after this, then um, how much harmonics I have. So actually I can take either this one or this one because I have four harmonics here, right? So let me run a for loop here for, I, I want to generate the signal, right? So I have to consider each and every harmonic. So let's say k is equal to one colon length of uh, uh, harmonic, which is that one. And when you start a part, you also have to end it. And now inside the body, you have to write whatever you want. So message is our zero vector created. It is, there is nothing inside it, but it is just the range that we defined and we filled it with zero. So that we have to fill it, fill up with some appropriate values. So this should be message plus. So it, it, it's something like C is equal to C plus one. So it returns the C value plus the new value is coming here and it's keep adding, right? So uh, I'm just putting it like this. So what is the sinusoidal uh, formula? You already know we saw it in the previous lab. So it is amplitude. We have the amplitude defined there, right? So this one and amplitude of K. So consider each and every term amplitude plus uh, then the sign and then the input argument of the sign. So what is the input argument? Two pi F, two pi multiplied by, what is F? F is your harmonic, right? And then again, harmonic is four harmonic. So again, you have to put K and then F multiplied with the FM. And what is FM? FM is our 1000 Hertz or one kilohertz and then multiplied with the time axis. So two pi F of T, this is the input argument of your um, signal, right? And then you have to end it. Now, if I run it, there is some, um, I, oh, I think I have something extra. Zeros, zeros. Okay. So firstly, I created a message here, right? So the message was filled with zero. What was T? What was rain? So if you see it from here, FM was 1000, harmonics was the number of frequency component and the number of amplitude components. So what is the maximum harmonic? It is two, 2000 because it will consider here, this the two frequency and then multiplied with this one. And then what will be the system frequency? It is 20 times of this one. So uh, it will be something like, uh, how much, 40? Yeah, 40,000. And what is the sampling rate? I told you the consecutive difference between the two samples. So each and every sample has this much of difference, this much of distance between them. And what is the minimum frequency? The minimum frequency is required for the visualization to consider two cycles at least. So I am considering two cycles of the minimum frequency when the reciprocal is basically the time period of that. And I'm just starting from zero and I'm going up to the range and I'm putting this sampling frequency as the uh, difference between the two. So it's quite clear now, right? You are starting from one up to two of twice of this one, twice of the minimum frequency. And then you are again considering all those points. Now, what I'm doing here, I'm making a message signal and then the message is blank. So firstly, it will compute the first amplitude, which is this one times the harmonic of this one with the frequency of this one. And it will consider the sine frequency, sine of that one. And then it will be also multiplied with the T, right? And then the second amplitude, the second amplitude with the second frequency with the times and third and fourth, and this will compute uh, the Fourier series of that one. And it will create some kind of semi-random signal for us, right? So I hope there is nothing tricky here. And uh, let's say I am, uh, what is my, firstly, let me plot it, right? So I will say figure one, and I will say plot and the, P comma 
message comma and let me plot it in the red color so i will plot it in the red color and if i see it this is my input signal generated right so if i want to make it more beautiful i will put the grid on and i will put the x label which is the time axis and also the y label just simply copy it and paste it and then y label and then make it like the empty tube right so uh, if i run it again then you can see that the grids are there and the amplitude variation and everything is there and since you have considered two cycles so the one cycle is completed here and then the second cycle is completed there and that was why because you had considered the range is two cycles the minimum frequency which contains two cycles so the two cycles of the minimum frequency now it looks like random uh, it is though repeating itself but there are some variations so it's good to be transmitted now let's uh, make some uh, sampling process now so i don't want to transmit each and every point of this one because it was there are a lot of points if you see it for example here you can see like a lot of points are there right so i don't want to transmit this much of points for example every jump is showing us a time so i want to transmit fewer points with all the information to be conveyed to the receiver side so i am considering every fifth sample so n underscore sample is equal to five which means that i'm going to consider every fifth sample and what is my sampling frequency my sampling frequency should be this one times the highest frequency component available so i had told you it should be greater than at least twice right to obey the nyquist criteria but now we have five which is quite a uh, good figure and what is my maximum frequency which is this one so i'll put it back here and uh, yeah uh, that is uh, that is it uh, because this contains the maximum harmonic and also the frequency component so i'm going to uh, define in sample a variable for sample so how about i just copy this one i will copy this one and i will just paste it here but instead of i will call it as amp so m sample is the vector which will contains the sampling values for me now as i told you i am going to take the every fifth element of from this signal so and if you look at here i'm not taking the one two three four but i will take this value and one two three four then i will take this value then i'll take this value one two three four this value this value so i'm only considering every fifth sample of that uh, signal so let me draw this one so firstly i have to uh, say for example starting from one and okay i will write the middle at the last but i will just write up to the length of t so length of t means that the final point right so i am going to starting from one and i am going to the final point and what what are the which sample i am going to consider so i have fs here so my fs should be equal to the firstly this is my sampling frequency this one so you have all the points here so this is my that sampling frequency i'll copy it and i will paste it here divided by i want to sample it with this red so my sampling frequency was 20 times and this is five times so the it will only take the every fourth sample if i make it equal to the from which one i take i should take the message and the same input argument uh, i hope it's not complicated right so uh, this is the sampling frequency and now let me plot it with the figure number two 
and the figure number two, I should, uh, I think I should plot it together with the figure number one. So I should write this one, okay, figure number one, and hold on, and now also plot, let me plot with the, uh, the that one. So I'll plot it with the stem. Stem means the all the discrete point that I consider, and I will time, and with respect to time, I should be using the uh, sample, sample, so which is M sample, right? And yeah, that is it. And also I have to do some uh, legend because I have to differentiate between the, the, the analog input and also the uh, digital uh, signal, right? The sample signal. So with the first one, well, my first plot, legend means that first you have to put the description of this one, which is the uh, generated signal. And what is the next one? The next one is your the sample signal. Some, sorry, sample signal. Right, so I think uh, everything is here and then the X and Y label is also there. So let me run it and I hope the output will be okay. What is happening? It is not what I was expecting. It should be looking like this, some samples. Let me see the code. Uh, I am doing the T and So I'm getting everything from the message signal and then the sample frequency divided by FS and then upgrade up to length of T. And also th this one, so um, sample was here and the message signal was there. So I don't know what happened. Um, T comma message stem t comma sample so okay Yeah, I think now it is showing. So basically it is not taking all the input, but the samples are taking only the particular fourth, every fourth uh, sample that is happening. So it is only considering that one. So all these things that you can see, that is the samples. And there are a lot of uh, other ones, which are the, uh, it is ignoring the remaining three, right? So this is the message signal, and this one is your uh, sample signal. Mm, I think this is enough for today. And we will leave the quantization part to for the next slide. So if you have any questions so far in this one, you can ask and yeah, let me also see if anyone can let for the attendance. So one five double three is this one still here? And one four seven two. So I think they are absent. How about one six five six? Yes. One six five six. Yes. Did you come late or on time? Yeah, I can wait. Okay. And how about the uh, three two seven one? Yes. Okay. Late or on time? Uh, I'm I'm late. Okay. And fourth one. No. Oh shoot! I think I should save it. Right. Okay, and fifth number, no absent, and no absent. 
Okay, so I think only two are absent. So do you have any question? Uh, I'll upload this video and also the um, script, this MATLAB script, both for today's lab and also the remaining, uh, yes, the previous lab um, here on your I class, you can do some practice on it. And yeah, if you had any question while attempting it, you can send me the snapshot, the detailed snapshot and also the, you know, the problem you are facing. And if you have, uh, please use my this email, right? So it's better if you use my email rather than directly sending me a message on iClass so, because it's always open and I can read your email instantly. So use this email for any question and with your snapshot and the problem you are facing, I'll be getting back to you. I'll, I'll reply you very shortly. So if you have no question, I think this is enough for today. And then in the next lab, we will start with the quantization. Okay. So see you, see you in the next lab. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you.